Hello flower friends. This morning I was going to show you where I'm planning on placing my everlasting cut flower garden this summer. This area um, has kind of been underutilized and it does, even though we're between my house and the greenhouse, it does get quite a bit of sun in the summer because of the way the sun goes over top. So I need to clean this up. I do have the seeds that I am going to plant. I'll get them started and I'll just share all of it along the way, how we transform this. Um, this arbor here is um, like the cattle panel arbor, bought it at a local garden center, Green Acres in Elk Grove. Love that place, it's like my Disneyland. Um, and for the price, it's it was excellent. I think it was $100 and buying an arbor for $100 that's sturdy, holds up in the snow, that's tough to find. Now, an everlasting cutting garden is flowers that you can dry and then they keep on going. That's why they're called everlasting. So it's got needs a lot of cleanup right here. It's been kind of a dumping spot for things and getting organized. And I will share how it progresses through the summer. I'll share with you what flowers I'm gonna be planting for drying and all that that entails. So I hope you'll join me on this little cut flower garden journey. Hey flower friends, welcome back to Flower Patch. And here is the cutting garden and the progress that I have made on it. Um, I've been getting out here a little as, as I can. Sometimes these things you have to do in baby steps because that's all the time you have for them. And that's the case with me. So. I'm going to bring you up closer and I'm going to show you all the details so far, but I'm sure, and I'll show you a before, um, you can already tell it's majorly been cleaned up. So let's come in closer and I'll walk you through some of my plans, which I'll admit they're dynamic and they could change, but let's go with what I'm thinking of right now. So right here is the arbor, which I was looking through at the first part of this video. And then down here is this raised bed. Now, formerly it was over here and I wasn't using it, but right here, I put it up against the greenhouse and I have this wire, it's called um, hardware cloth, but it's really wire mesh to keep the gophers from coming up into my garden bed. And then I'm starting to fill it. I put um, a lot of old compost that I had over there in here. And then I raked up the debris, which was a lot of pine needles and leaves and put in there. And then I also uh, raked up some of my uh, chicken debris, which has got a lot of straw in it. So it's not too terribly strong as far as, far as nitrogen is concerned. And I've started to wet it down. Now I will not plant this probably for another month or two. Um, and I still have more of my DIY raised bed. Um, potting soil to put in here. Now down here, I hope you can see this, I should go check, is a board. Let me look, make sure you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, down here is a cedar fence board, which I am going to attach about five to six inches from the front of this. And so this will be another uh, bed that I can plant in. Now, my original intention was to do all of cutting flowers in here that you can dry. And then I realized I really didn't have enough spots for my tomatoes that hadn't already had tomatoes in them before, last year or the year before. And you really need to rotate your crops. So I thought this would be a perfect spot for um, two of my tomato plants and then I'll plant flowers around those tomato plants. And then up front here, I'm gonna seed something or have some of my plants, my dried flower, cut flowers along this area as well. And then next to it, there's an empty spot. Uh, once I cut my hardware cloth off that I can plant some cutting flowers in. In fact, I probably should scroll you over there. Right between this barrel, which has uh, one of the lilacs I started from a sucker in it 
and it has some tulips I planted. I could put some uh, flowers for cutting in there too, but right here, this space, that's almost two feet. I can plant some flowers in there. So I'm trying to make the most of my space here. And um, it's pretty, um, it hasn't really had anything planted there. So it's pretty well, um, has nutrients, plenty of nutrients in it. Now back there, right, right over here, you can see these fence boards I pulled out and I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna make a picket fence to border around, I think I lost one of my gloves over there, around this bed, just to define it and give it some panache. And then back there along the woodshed wall, that's the woodshed back there. Right now I have my bamboo that I just divided and I needed to get started. I have them sitting in water, tubs of water uh, containers. And um, right along there, I thought I would plant my sunflowers. They get really tall and I can secure them if I need to with the wire that is part of the woodshed wall. So that's my plans there. And then along the edge, along this edge where the path is, I'm gonna plant more flowers. And I don't know if it's gonna be the celicea or, I mean, it could be all of it. I've got um, gomfrina, I have baby's breath, all kinds of things that you can dry status and keep as everlasting bouquets. So that's the plan so far. And let me see, let me just point you really down here at the base of the arbor right down here, you see my shadow. And I don't know if it gets it completely, but right here, I'm gonna put a climbing rose and it will climb up this arbor, metal arbor, and climb over it and provide a real pretty entrance there. And uh, I will finish getting my greenhouse fixed and that will be, I can take the plastic off then. All right, that just kept it dry inside because I had some panels that needed replacing and um, so that kept the rain from coming in. Not that we had that much this year. It was a pretty dry year. And oh, I wanted to say too, right there on the other side is another barrel. Um, and I'm gonna plant, I don't know if I'm gonna put another rose in that or, I don't want a clematis. That gets pretty hot there and I don't know if it would survive. Maybe I could put a clematis down at the base and mulch it good, but I might put another uh, climber there so it can climb over and um, cover this arbor well. Now the one caveat that we have to prepare for is the snow coming off the roof of the greenhouse stacks up here and it will push this arbor this way. So we're gonna get some of those big stakes, um, fencing stakes and put them, uh, secure it with that and hopefully that will prevent it from smooshing it over too badly. Okay, so that and that my friends is the progress on the cutting garden beside the greenhouse and i and i hope you'll join me for the next progress report on that area i'm doing it in increments only because it's kind of deceptive when you show a big mess and then it's all done um that doesn't work for me because i have to fit it into my day and if you're like me, you have other things, other obligations um, that take your time as well. So you can get it done, taken in little bites at a time. So don't get overwhelmed with some garden tasks. There's tons of weeds I need to be get pulling, um, all these other things I need to do. But I'm going to focus on one thing at a time and get it done. And so I hope that you will tackle a big project sometime soon in little increments of time and get that done. And that, my friends, is the update on the cottage cutting garden or everlasting cutting garden that I have been sharing as we go. This summer, it ought to be gorgeous. I can't wait to get my fence up and all the fun stuff that's going to happen there. So, and that, my friends, is an update on the cutting garden AKA now it's also going to be a veggie garden. So I guess you call it a potager. And um, I'll let you know how it's coming along and what changes I make later, if I make any. You never know. Everything evolves around here slowly and things come to mind at the last minute. So I hope to see you in the next video.